Welcome to the real Monster D. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> Video game movies. We have such an intriguing love and hate relationship with them. We are always excited to hear the next one that comes out, yet we also view it with extreme hesitation for... So many of them have landed to uh, very much miss the mark. <laughs> but we always hold out hope for that dream film, that one project that comes out and proclaims with one great loud voice. Video game films can be taken seriously. Well, that is not what we are here to discuss today. <laughs> today, we are here to talk about... It came from the desert. <laughs> A 2017 very overlooked film based upon the 1989 very much forgotten video game. <laughs> this film pits motocrossers against a horde of ants. <laughs> you see, this film begins with uh, two protagonists named Lucas and Brian, who whisked themselves and friends away for a desert celebration for Lucas's recent uh, motocross victory. <laughs> of course, this party just happens to be a uh, can's throw away from a secret abandoned military base. Oh, always be careful where you plan your parties at. <laughs> of course, uh, these two eventually peel off from the main party and decide to explore this abandoned facility uh, when they run into their very own raptor kitchen scene. I mean, giant ant kitchen scene, which kicks off this entire horrific adventure. <laughs> These ants are quickly led back to the party area where the hapless, <laughs> happy people are uh, malevolently interrupted. <laughs> uh, what I appreciate about this film is that, uh, for one, for it being such a lowly, not too heard of film, the animation on the ants is actually pretty good. It definitely is a few notches above your average uh, Asylum or Sci-Fi Channel film. In that uh, the ants, uh, you, you do not see so much of the, the thing where uh, the ants uh, aren't just sliding around on the ground. Or sometimes you get that thing where multiple monsters... Uh, are clearly cloned from one another and share the exact same animation sometimes on screen. No, these an ants actually have quite a bit of personality, perhaps a little too much, because uh, these ants are frequently found to be laughing <laughs> as they attack these hapless partygoers. <laughs> Beyond that, these ants uh, do have uh, some rather gruesome ways of dealing in with uh, these people with stings and bites, uh, with these sort of... Uh, web attacks. <laughs> uh, one ant even makes uh, uh, quite an interesting use out of a full keg. Ugh. <laughs> the feel of this film is very, very close to Eight-Legged Freaks, which got considerably more attention than this. Uh, in fact, yes, in many ways, this could be compared to that. In fact, that, as I recall, uh, featured a uh, sort of uh, motor vehicle chase with spiders that may well have inspired the creation of this whole uh, thing. <laughs> but uh, if you are in just the right mood, uh, this movie may well appeal to you. I would recommend this for more of a, an adult crowd. Uh, the perfect film for you to get together with some friends late at night when you want to have a monster double feature with some snacks, some pizza, some choice beverages. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and laugh at these crazy ants. <laughs> also, make sure you stick uh, to the end, into the credits, uh, for during the credits, they actually have essentially a playthrough of classic It Came From The Desert game play footage. <laughs> Quite a nice homage. <laughs> uh, I really do wish this film had given, uh, had been given just a little more attention, 
even a little closer to the levels of something like uh, Rampage. <laughs> but, uh, oh well, it is definitely a fun romp. Definitely worth checking out if you're in the mood for sort of a modern update of uh, classic B films such as Them and It Came From Outer Space. Uh, so go ahead and uh, swarm on over and join the colony that is It Came From The Desert. Are you in the mood for a monster? Five Minute Monsters have returned! <laughs> Enjoy a 30-minute experience in your own home, where I draw all the monsters I can muster. I am going to pull the monster right out of your very own mind. I will do so by using my magic monster maker. Order your experience at therealmonsterd.com. While I work to compile a list of Swarm and Ant Metal songs for you, <laughs> I thought I might take some time to entertain you by talking about a, another piece of uh, audio insect enjoyment. <laughs> this is some lighter fare in the form of the Butterfly Ball and the Grasshopper's Feast. <laughs> this project is the brainchild of Roger Glover of Deep Purple fame. <laughs> he hobbled together a grand cast of musicians to take the part of a variety of woodland creatures all making their way to the mysterious butterfly ball. <laughs> this entire story is based around a children's poem written by William Roscoe. <laughs> Each of these character creatures is voiced by an amazing artist, and I thought I might take some time to go through some of the highlights, some of my particular favorites. <laughs> Early on in the album, uh, things are kicked off with a song called Get Ready, <laughs> sung by vocalist Glenn Hughes. He is also of Deep Purple fame, uh, making one half of the vocalist uh, assortment in the Mach 3 rendition of the band. He comes with his light, soulful, super singing talents and really knows how to wake up this entire album with some sunshine. <laughs> Another purple alum is David Coverdale, who sings the song and track Behind the Smile. John Gustafson tells us to watch out for the bat. While Earl James, in his ever so bluesy style, <laughs> brings us Old Blind Mole. But of course, since we're talking, uh, since I'm the one talking to you, <laughs> the great highlight on this album to me is none other than Ronnie James Dio. <laughs> yes, he has three tracks on this album, including Sitting on a Dream, which is a delightfully contemplative song in the vein of something like uh, Rainbow Connection. <laughs> Then there is his exciting, exuberant, parade-worthy song, Love Is All. <laughs> you can go onto YouTube and catch the wonderful animated 70s style music video that fits this, that pits uh, Ronnie James Dio's voice into the gullet of a dancing, guitar-playing frog. <laughs> yes. And Ronnie even manages to close out the album with the song Homeward, really bringing it in in such a warm, delightful way. <laughs> this album is far from the hard rock and metal that many of uh, its uh, participants uh, would be known for, but 
One thing I do appreciate is that this really shows just what kind of a range so many of these artists had and their willingness to try some wonderful different things. So if you want to see another peek and another side of some of these uh, legendary rockers, I highly suggest that you flutter on in and put a compound eye and an antenna and ear on the butterfly ball and the grasshopper's feast. Looking for a monstrous keepsake for your loved one? How about a monster on demand? I turn your loved ones, pets, even yourself into highly detailed, personalized monster images. Order yours today at therealmonsterd.com. Welcome to the drawing challenge. <laughs> well, I thought we would get things crawling today. How about I finish up this insect episode with a nice <laughs> antagonistic ant monster. <laughs> so let me set my time telling device and we are go. <laughs> so an ant. I have an idea for an ant. I'm going to use a particular type of ant as my basis. Uh, it will be stylized, it will be fictional, but uh, I will have in mind a very particular kind of ant. There, of course, are so many kinds of ants out there. Um, let's see here. That it is easy to, or actually, actually rather daunting to pick and choose what aspects of what ants you might have. I mean, ants, while known for being small, come in a variety of sizes. Uh, sometimes even within a colony, they can be many, many different sizes. You know, you, you can have uh, big giant soldiers and tiny workers, and then the queen is whatever size she is. Um, and then from species to species, they, they vary so, so much. Some animals or some ants can seem rather benign, tending to sort of their gardens and their, their, their grain harvesting and that sort of thing. And other ants, <laughs> they, they, they clear a forest of uh, uh, all who lives and moves. You know, things like the bullet ants, the siafu, army ants, of course, are famous. Um, and so, uh, fire ants, you know, certainly. And it is no surprise that ants have found their way into inspiring so many forms of fiction. You know, of course, going all the way back to the 1950s era of them, all about a giant irradiated ant colony, which in many ways was a precursor, an inspiration for uh, the film Aliens. You know, because it was all about this sort of team of uh, sort of roughnecks. Um, descending into the madness that was the, the giant monster's uh, colony. Let's see here. And uh, yeah, that very much felt like an early, early version of what would become something like uh, aliens. All right, so there's that. All right, so now I have these legs sort of peering out from the side. I was actually trying to pay homage in my own way to aliens here by letting this be a giant pulsating egg filled queen. <laughs> You can judge whether or not I succeed here. Oh, this is going to get rough. Trying to come into it for a landing here. Uh, but I think I might be able to pull it off here. I know time is winding down. 
But uh, yes, the other leg is going to be hidden somewhere. But she is somehow suspended up, which ants would not be. I mean, they're all sort of down on all sixes, crawling around. Um, but giving it that sort of majestic queen pose, I should really pop out these jaws more. And in particular, I gave it these extra long jaws because I wanted her to be stylized after these things known as bulldog ants, which I believe are natives to Australia. They have these big, massive, powerful looking jaws, uh, bigger than the average ant, which is perfect when you want to do battle with, with, with a warring neighbor ant colony. You want to keep your enemies <laughs> sort of uh, out of reach from your own person. You, you grow some extra long jaws there to get the job done. So the bulldog ants in their own world are sort of um, tantamount to, uh-oh, the army ants or siafu of elsewhere. So I'm going to utilize <laughs> the dying marker, even, even though I'm out of time to go ahead and at least pop out that front body there. So there we go. <laughs> All right, that was intense. <laughs> but that is my uh, giant bulldog queen. <laughs> uh, sign it there. And so what do you think? <laughs> uh, does this draw, drawing uh, raise up to uh, Royal standards, it was a little bit rough. Might be a little bit rough, but I think the challenge was worthwhile. <laughs> so I hope you have enjoyed uh, not just this ant drawing, but this uh, insectine uh, video entire. If you have, please do scratch that like button and toll that bell so you can be ready, willing, and salivating for the very next episode of The Real Monster D. Stay monstrous! <laughs>